kasau dolek kejirau ka kenita su babau dahagan ni. Wadasu meskia hnasun ka tegayak taruh ko niyo. Tan su palu bi dahagan sebikan utuh madu padai. Sidung niyo mekeli kemapo ska enau karena kedesan niyo biak bi mudus selegu mdekabi melubo ini sangai. The huge trees always remind me of my childhood, when we spent our days with the trees. I loved to climb up to the top of the tree and look afar. We were always playing and showing off around the trees. The moment I step into the forest, childhood memories filled with laughter slowly emerge. When I was little, many trees surrounded my tribe. Many species of birds chose to build their nests in the tall and dense trees. There were also brightly colored chrysalis and leaf-like pupa. At dusk, the butterfly slowly emerges from its chrysalis. There are wild bees in the bushes, and the cicada is just shedding its skin. These childhood experiences are nature's most generous gifts to me. I visit the forest whenever I feel like it, not least because the varying seasons and times have different surprises in store for me. The unassuming little orchid hanging on a branch, the Indian pipes that appear out of the blue on the rocks after the rain, the eye-catching mushrooms on a withered branch, the mists that come rolling over the jagged mountains, all these move me beyond measure. In March, while the snow still lingers in the high mountains, many flowers are blooming at the foot of the mountains. The warm south winds arrive, reminding the birds to don on their new costumes and embark on their annual mating season. It is no easy task to attract and keep a partner. You have to sport a beautiful plumage, complete with an excellent repertoire of song and dance. And the occasional indulgence and gifts are necessary tactics as well. And of course, let's not forget the fights between rivals. The weather becomes warmer. In the misty evergreen forests of mid-elevation, all kinds of plants are merrily putting out new leaves and blossoms. As food sources increase, the Taiwan Yuhina cannot resist its urge to join the mating frenzy. A secretive nest is found nestled in the beard lichen. Three couples share the nest. Everyone is involved in the work, and together they build their nest. The adults are meticulous in their endeavors. The nest is inspected thoroughly, and no details are spared. The tightly woven beard lichen not only protects the nest from the elements, it is also perfect as a camouflage. If the birds had not been flitting in and out, and so giving the game away, the nest would remain hidden.
The Euhinas breed cooperatively, which means that several couples share a nest, incubate, and raise their young together. This strategy mainly helps to counteract the deluge brought upon the nest by the plum rains and typhoons. Working together, the Euhinas are able to improve the chances of successful breeding. Sharing the work implies that you will be less stressed during the breeding season, and the birds will find time to repeat their reproductive process in a single season. The cooperative breeding behavior of the Euhinas is extremely rare. Out of more than 10,000 species of birds in the world, less than 20 species practice this approach. The relationship between birds, flowers, and fruit is a clever arrangement by nature. The plants attract the birds with the colors and shapes, offering the birds with fulfilling fruit, while the birds in return provide free delivery for the plants. In the forest, it is easy to spot parasitic plants hanging high up on branches. They are especially conspicuous during winter when the trees are bare. There are many types of parasitic plants. The mulberry mistletoe, the European mistletoe, and the corthal mistletoe are remarkable examples. The interesting thing is, how do these plants fly up to the trees? During April and May, the forest colors are as rich as can be. Blossoms are found everywhere. The fire-breasted flower pecker sings its mating song as it weaves in and out of the mistletoe. Take a closer look, and you will realize that they are busy feeding on the mistletoe fruit. The bird will first bite through the skin of the fruit, and then swallow the flesh and seeds. The seeds of the mistletoe are coated with sticky fruit gel that will enable the seeds to attach firmly to its host upon excretion. Having seeds that fly up to the trees for germination is definitely the secret that keeps parasitic plants well and alive. Every time I step into the Taroko National Park, the ever-changing mountains and forests of the park always overwhelm me. These transformations are due to the differences in altitudes and climate, as well as the varying topography and scenes. The forces of climate change affect the environment too. Mount Qingshui is comprised of marble rocks. Its majestic peaks reach high into the clouds. The famous Qingshui Cliff features a dramatic drop from the top of the cliff to the Pacific Ocean, within a mere four meters from the eastern front. The steep and bare limestone rocks may seem like a harsh environment, yet many hardy plant species are able to thrive here. The narrow and isolated microenvironment is the cradle for nurturing new plant species. Shallow and calcareous soil found within the cracks of the rocks provide growing grounds for many plant species that are only found in Taroko and named after Taroko. Apart from the birds and plants, Turoko's forests are also home to many species of mammals, which are both rare and elusive. As in the case of birds, animals of the forest play many different roles in the ecosystem. Some animals look for food up in the trees. Some seek fulfillment on the ground. 
some climb, some fly, some like to burrow deep into the earth, while some just take it as it is. It is most exciting to get close to a wild animal and observe it. I still remember how touched I was the first time I saw a civet cat coming out of its hole. These nocturnal animals have rather pointy snouts, round ears, stripes and spots on their bodies, and rings on their tails. Equipped with extremely sensitive senses of hearing and seeing, they are naturally very agile and noiseless in movement. Not many people have seen them in the wild. The yellow-throated marten is one of my favorite animals. It moves swiftly and is an expert climber. The martens are the largest species from the mustelids family found in Taiwan. Its body length, tail included, is about 80 centimeters long. I have come into several close encounters with the martens and have found them to be rather friendly. I was truly delighted and thrilled to be so close to such innocent animals. After all, they are a ruthless threat to many species of birds and animals in the forest. In the past, there were very few yellow-throated martens, and therefore not easy to spot. But nowadays, they are quite often seen in the wild. The widespread conservation efforts of the National Park are paying off. In a mature forest, all life forms coexist in an almost perfect form of dynamic equilibrium. The red-bellied tree squirrel is an important disperser of seeds in the forest, thanks to their habit of moving and storing food in different places. During times when food is scarce, squirrels will chew on tree bark. This becomes a problem when the forest is overpopulated with squirrels. Every time I watch the Indian black eagle soar majestically through the forest, I go into a state of rapture. This is of course partly because the eagle is such a rare sight, but also because of its kingly appearance. The Indian black eagle is listed as a rare and protected species. It is an endangered bird of prey as well. When gliding, its wingspan can reach 180 centimeters long. During the breeding season, the eagle chooses to build its nest on the branch or on a bird nest fern of a huge tree. On top of the canopy, this little eagle is embarking on a new journey under the care of his parents. Every day, they bring back their chick freshly hunted food. They like to feed the young of others to their young. The daily menu includes birds, mice, flying squirrels, and squirrels with baby squirrels topping the list. We can easily identify the role of the large birds of prey in the forest. The Mungau Kalodan, Khauni Brehot Nio, Nikan Utuhna, the Mungau Duli, Taika Dutu Khauni, Nabau Spurik, Musupu Pilapahkana, Kibisau Gaga Pernau, Samalu Gabihu, Sabuai Nakui Ka Pilapahni. Undoubtedly, the forests are home to a myriad of life forms. They are generous in their provisions and creators of a healthy environment. The forests are very much like our human societies. There are different layers, species, and individuals interacting in intricate spaces. 
Every species has its own special needs, and the sustainability of all links is paramount. Looking up at the grand canopy of the forest, I know that humans too belong to this beautiful land of phytoncides and infinite colors. The plants, birds, and beasts that I see are divine and awe-inspiring in my memory and experience. Everything is interconnected. All are bonded inextricably.